The story starts with our protagonist, Ryuichi Shishido, who desired a high school girl named Rindo to be his partner, but she always rejected him and disliked his nature. Few days later, she declared that she was already in love with someone. Despite her refusal, he attempted to force himself into her life and into other special activities, such as the NTR, if you know what I mean. However, this was all a flashback, or more like a wet dream of our actual NC from reality. He woke up from his sleep and realized the NTR love manga had invaded his subconscious. After all, there's no way it would be real, right? He attributed the headache he felt to this vivid dream. As he sat down, MC carefully analyzed the situation and came to the astonishing realization that his current life was based on the memories of his past existence. It appeared he had been reincarnated into a world reminiscent of the manga he had read in his previous life. Tragically, in that manga he played the reprehensible role of a scoundrel who stole another man's woman and used blackmail to manipulate her, leading to her being repeatedly violated. To his dismay, the heroine of the manga, who had just started dating her childhood friend, fell victim to MC's advances as he happened to be in her class. Witnessing himself in such a repulsive role troubled him deeply. MC's family environment was dreadful, and this incident occurred in April, coinciding with the beginning of the manga's story. Never did he expect his past memories to resurface when he was merely a second-year student. It was during this time that he witnessed two boys harassing a girl, but he initially chose not to get involved, attempting to avoid such matters and just mind his own business. However, he soon changed his mind, and he intervened when he couldn't ignore their inappropriate behavior any longer. Stop right there, criminal scum. He felt puzzled as to why people seemed scared of him. In the midst of this, he unexpectedly encountered Rindu Shizuna, a stunning woman who any man would be captivated by. She possessed a well-defined and proportioned face, framed by long, glossy black hair cascading down her back, the very heroine he intended to steal in the manga. MC deemed this encounter too coincidental to be a mere chance. Assuring Rinda the boys wouldn't return, he advised her to be cautious on her way home. Although he apologized for frightening her with his appearance, she graciously thanked him before departing. For MC, being appreciated by someone after a prolonged period brought a sense of happiness he hadn't anticipated, even if it came from the heroine of the manga. He was determined not to taint with a netterer route, a storyline involving stealing someone's partner and doing questionable things with them. He resolved to avoid any involvement with Rindu to prevent such a storyline from unfolding. Despite his awareness of the past memories influencing his current life, MC's daily existence remained unchanged. He vowed to exert every effort to evade the NTR plotline embedded in the manga's narrative. His classmates silently whispered, he is dangerous. Don't look at him, his face is scary, reinforcing MC's sense of alienation from others. Surprisingly, he arrived at school early, a deviation from his usual habits. Observing his classmates, he couldn't help but think his senses must have been dulled before his memory returned. Upon Rindu's entrance into the classroom, her peers greeted her warmly, praising her beauty and charm. MC couldn't help but contemplate Rindu's allure, noting her outstanding appearance and aura, characteristics befitting a true heroine. Rindu approached MC to express her gratitude for his help the previous day, apologizing for not thanking him in person earlier. She genuinely appreciated his assistance, complimenting him on his cuteness, a comment that left MC astonished. Evidently, he's never looked into the mirror before. His classmates were taken aback, unsure if Rindu was acting rationally when she engaged in conversation with MC. Soon after, their teacher arrived, signaling the start of the day's activities. Throughout the day, MC kept his distance from Rindo, adhering to the promise he made to himself. Surely, if I just leave her be, everything will be fine, right? Despite his efforts to understand the situation, MC remained perplexed, unable to find any clues to make sense of his past memories intertwining with his present life. So hey, Rindo's boyfriend in the manga asked her about what she was doing with MC. Rindo replied she felt satisfied whenever she saw MC around her. Rindo then asked Sohei why he was going home late, and he told her he had planned to spend the night with her. Sohei Shinozaki is the protagonist who gets sidelined by Rindo in the original manga that appeared in MC's dream. As soon as MC recalled the events from his past life, only the memories related to the manga came to his mind. Up until now, MC could barely remember the names of his classmates, as his current self hasn't done anything noteworthy. Besides, who cares about classmates in school when you're already having such a great time with girls outside of class? 
Sohei's intense gaze signifies she misunderstood MC. Even though MC realized he had been reincarnated, he is unable to change anything about his life and would likely be doomed to follow in the footsteps of the manga. However, MC thought if Sohei and Rindu were destined to be together, they could go ahead and do whatever they wanted. MC did not want to get involved in trouble, so he avoided Rindu and Sohei throughout the day. MC ended up sleeping for too long in the fifth period. He woke up in the afternoon and was surprised no one was kind enough to wake him up. He didn't remember anything after the end of the fifth period, likely because he slept late the previous night. MC guessed he had to hurry up and go home. When he looked at the flower vase, he noticed it needed more water, and the water in the vase was dirty too. Rindu appeared and called to MC, and he replied to her like the good boy he is. She asked him what he intended to do with the flower vase, and MC replied he wanted to change the dirty water in the vase. MC was surprised to see Rindu again, and wondered why the person he wanted to avoid kept coming his way. It's almost like there's some sort of plot pushing them together. But that couldn't be. Rinda thought MC was not the kind of person to do something bad. She was following MC to the water system, and he asked why she had to come along with him. She replied that, as members of the same class, it was a shared responsibility for them to change the dirty water in the flower vase. Rindo said she guessed MC wouldn't trust rumors at all. MC answered, his classmates were not completely wrong. Rindo mentioned she had heard MC was the most notorious delinquent in the history of the high school, and people said he had the worst behavior one could imagine. Fortunately for her, the MC she was talking to isn't the same as the previous one. MC's memories from his past life couldn't change what he had already done in the world, and he realized he could not completely erase his past. Rindo said she thought MC was a kind person, and he replied he was not a kind person or anything. Rindu interrupted, saying someone who was not kind would not do what MC did. MC thought Rindu could call him nice because she hadn't seen the delinquent part of him, like in the original manga. That might be the reason for the misunderstanding. MC warned her to be careful around him, as she was a beautiful woman, and he had the ability to cause trouble for her. He told her to go home as he was busy and might not go home very soon. However, she told him to wait. MC woke up and realized he had been dreaming. He almost flipped a weird switch in the dream. MC promised himself not to have anything to do with the NTR stuff, as he knew it was not a good idea to be involved with her. MC was hungry, and he was surprised to see that there was no more cup of ramen at home. He decided to go and stock up on some instant foods, as he had bad cooking skills and had never cooked in his previous life. MC was shocked to see Rindu in the supermarket, and he tried to turn away, only for her to call out telling him to wait. She reminded him, since they had met earlier, there was no need for him to ignore her. She asked if he wanted to shop for dinner and noticed him buying many cup of ramen, advising him not to buy so much junk food. MC explained he lived alone without a family and couldn't cook, so he ended up taking up junk food naturally. Totally relatable. Rindu apologized for being insensitive to his needs, but her words only made MC feel awkward. Now she is going to worry about me for nothing, MC thought to himself. He blamed himself for saying something unnecessary. Rindo tapped MC. What is it now? MC asked. Rindu offered to cook for him and asked him to take her to his house, but MC refused, fearing he would be walking right into the NTR ending. Rindu insisted on coming to MC's house to make dinner for him, promising not to let him go out of the supermarket without taking her along. MC wondered why she cared for him to that extent. He thought he could accidentally lose his reason and get himself into trouble. MC asked her why she insisted on coming to his apartment, even though she was well aware he lived alone. MC hoped that things wouldn't turn out the way they did in the original story of the manga, with tons of fun stuff happening on his bed. After all, it's the same stuff that happened with many other women. Despite his initial reluctance, he agreed to walk Rindu home if she was scared of the troublemaking guys. Of course, in the original manga, it was he who attacked her. So what did she have to fear now? However, Rindu insisted on going to MC's place. He admitted to himself he was weak-willed, as he found himself drawn to her appearance and pure gaze. Rindu asked if she could use his apron, but MC informed her it was dirty. He pondered how to make Rindu leave his apartment, realizing he had been getting caught up in her pace since earlier in the day. He couldn't understand how everything ended up like this, Suddenly, a thought crossed his mind, and he found it refreshing to have a lady cook a meal for him. He reminisced about his previous life and wondered how long it had been since someone had cooked for him. 
Rinda placed Nikujaga, a delicacy on the table, serving it with rice. MC thought it was the best food combination he had ever tasted, and Rindu explained he wanted to cook something quickly, hence the simple yet delicious delicacy. He admitted that the food was incredibly delicious, and she warned him not to eat in a hurry to avoid choking. Curious about her cooking skills, Rindu asked if the food she prepared was really delicious. MC took a gulp of water and confessed it was his first time having Nikujaga taste this good. Rindu advised him not to overeat, but he insisted she join him in feasting on the food, otherwise he would finish it all by himself. Rindu agreed to eat with him, and MC remarked again how delicious the Nikujaga was. He finished his meal and thanked Rindo for her hospitable character, complimenting her cooking. As the evening progressed, MC remembered his initial plan to send Rindu away, yet there he was, having dinner with her. He realized he had been deceiving himself and that being alone with someone like Rindo was not a good idea. When she offered to wash the dishes, he told her not to worry and asked her to leave. However, an accident occurred and she fell to the floor, prompting MC to try to catch her but they ended up in an awkward position. Embarrassed, MC apologized, but Rindu assured him she was not offended. He concluded he needed to send Rindu home before he lost his reasoning again, acknowledging that being alone with her was not a good idea. Rindu, however, dismissed his worries and told him she barged in herself. Grateful for her cooking, MC confessed to her that she must have heard various rumors about him, including his past relationships with many women. He admitted to his checkered past and advised her not to come to the home of someone like him. Edgy are we? Undeterred, Rindu thanked him for his honesty and said she couldn't just leave him alone. She showed MC her house and promised to come over again to cook dinner for him. Annoyed that Rindu wasn't listening to him, MC couldn't help but feel more and more irritated. Meanwhile, Rindu's mom Shizuna welcomed her back home and was curious about her friend. Rindu apologized for coming home late and retreated to her room, unable to stop thinking about how adorable MC looked while eating and enjoying her food. She was fascinated by his strength and dependability, and she appreciated how he helped her when she crossed the line. Soon after, Sawe called Rindu to check on her. Concerned about the earlier conversation she had with MC in the class, Rindu assured him it was not a significant discussion. Sawe reminded Rindu about what people say about MC plays around with many women, has a menacing look, and gives off a delinquent vibe. In response, Rindu replied, telling him she wasn't threatened at all and that MC is a good person. She declared she wanted to sleep and would be ending the call. Soe then suggested he might have some ulterior motives towards Rindu. Rindu, confident in her belief that MC is a kind person, decided to trust him despite what others said about him. She and Sohei were childhood friends and during their younger days, they had loved each other and even agreed to marry once they became adults. However, Sohei couldn't help but wonder why Rindu trusted MC more than him, her childhood friend. Meanwhile, MC found himself reminiscing about Rindu's delicious food and her beauty. He was tempted to taste her food again, but knew he had a hard time resisting both her culinary skills and her attractiveness. Just then, he heard a familiar voice behind him, Chisa, a longtime friend who had come to meet him. Curious, MC asked Chisa how much alcohol she had consumed. Quite a bit, apparently. Chisa was a flashy and attention-grabbing college girl, and she and MC maintained a casual, uncomplicated relationship. Chisa shared how she had been at a celebration party where some guys insisted on walking her home, a situation she found disgusting. Upon entering MC's room, Chisa noticed it looked cleaner than before. MC explained she had taken out the trash, leading Chisa to playfully tease him about whether a new woman had influenced him with her neatness. MC denied having anyone like that in his life and insisted he was all alone. Chisa, amused by MC's response, complimented him as a dream man that any lady would cherish. Despite the playful banter, MC thanked her for the compliment. However, when Chisa expressed her desire to stay the night and explore her body with him, MC politely declined, suggesting she take a bath and that they wouldn't sleep together. Unbeknownst to MC, Rindu had unconsciously wandered close to his house. She wondered if it was because of what had happened earlier and assumed she had taken a shortcut, bringing her closer to MC's residence due to its proximity to their school. As she observed MC walking with another lady holding his arm, Rindu quickly hid her face, recalling what he had said about his relationships with women. She easily avoids the NPC's aggro check and watches them from afar. Chiza, seeing Rindo playfully clings to MC, 
leaving a kiss on his cheek before departing. MC then noticed Rindu and asked Chiza to stop clinging to him. Rindu's heart ached as she watched MC with another woman. However, she was interrupted when Soe grabbed her from behind and apologized, explaining his actions were driven by his worry for her. Rindu replied she needed to get to school early and left Sohe behind. Lost in thought, Rindu almost collided with a moving car, but MC came to her rescue by pulling her back. She couldn't understand why MC was so kind to her despite trying to push her away with his delinquent facade. After school, MC met a woman at a bar, and they had drinks together. The bartender advised the woman to go home early, sensing MC's intentions. The woman revealed she had been lonely since her husband's passing and she was looking for someone to keep her company. MC promised to make her feel good, and their interaction took a romantic turn. Suddenly, MC woke up from his dream, realizing he had fallen asleep after lunch. He couldn't help but recall that in real life, every woman who slept with him seemed to fall in love with him, making him wonder about the consequences of such encounters. But that was a memory from the past. It involved the same woman who resembled Rindo, despite their age difference, Rinda decided to visit MC out of concern for his lack of cooking skills. She wanted to prepare a decent meal for him. However, MC insisted she need not worry about him, and revealed he survived on bread for breakfast and lunch, while going to a bar for dinner. Rindo, worried about his alcohol consumption, offered to accompany him to the bar to ensure he stayed away from it. MC expressed his reservations about Rindu going to a bar, claiming it was not a suitable place for a good girl like her. Nevertheless, Rindav disregarded his advice and joined him at the bar. The bartender noticed the girl accompanying MC was different from the usual women he saw him with. He offered some advice to Rindo, but she brushed it off, choosing to remain by MC's side. The bartender then treated them both as regular customers. Unexpectedly, Rindu's mother walked into the bar and was surprised to find her daughter with MC. Both Rindu and MC were taken aback to meet her there. Rindu was stunned to discover her classmate, MC, might have been having an affair with her mother. MC acknowledged the awkwardness of the situation and feared Rindu might find out about their relationship. Thinking quickly, Rindu's mother asked Rindu to introduce her friend, and Rindu came up with a story about her helping MC improve his eating habits by cooking for him. She also explained she was at the bar to keep an eye on him and prevent him from drinking alcohol. Rindu's mother appreciated MC for looking out for her daughter. They all had a meal together, but Rindu excused herself to use the restroom. In her absence, Rindu's mother and MC began discussing their secret love affair, deciding to keep it hidden from Rindu. MC felt guilty about being involved in such an unusual relationship, while Rindu's mother confessed to having fallen in love with him. She asked him to reward her for keeping their secret by embracing her tightly. Unfortunately, Rindu caught them in an intimate moment, and her mother tried to cover up her actions, claiming to feel tipsy. Rindo confronted her mother, who then apologized and left. Rindu asked MC if he had met her mother before, and she requested he call her by her first name, just as he did with her mother. MC obliged and called her Shizuna. Afterward, they both went their separate ways to their respective homes. Later, Sohei, Rindo's boyfriend, looked at MC with resentment, wondering why Rindo clung to him more than she did to her own partner and childhood friend. In the storage room, MC sat alone, pondering the situation. Rinda suddenly approached him and asked if he had a past relationship with her mother. MC was taken aback and accidentally spilled some milk, confessing he had once slept with Rindu's mother. He feared Rindu would hate him for it, but to MC's surprise, Rindu revealed the secret he shared was the reason why her mother had been moody lately. She then shocked him further by expressing her gratitude for what he had done for her mother since her father's departure. Rindo felt solace in knowing her mother found comfort in MC's presence. She even asked him if he would consider having a similar relationship with her, becoming her partner as well. The story continues with Rindu on top of Riwichi, pinning him to the floor and literally straight up asking if he wants to take a nap with her. Naturally, MC is surprised and asks her why she suddenly decided to do this, but he sees her shaking arms and realizes he can only imagine the courage it must have taken for her to ask him such a question. Thinking things through carefully, he tells her if she's asking him whether or not he wants to do fun things with her, the answer is yes. This makes her really excited, but before anything else can happen, Captain's stomach growling strikes and MC tells her to go and eat her lunch, causing her to run off promising to see him later. After she leaves him alone, 
NC finally lets out a sigh of relief at having avoided such a weird situation. I'm in seriously deep crap, he mutters while blushing a little. Meanwhile, Rindu is feeling really embarrassed at her stomach having started to growl at such an awkward moment. But her face is so red I wear I heard the Soviet march playing in the background. She's just really glad her crush sees her as a woman too, and not just a classmate. Something no girl has ever thought of in my life, unfortunately. The next day at school, NC thinks about how he's been coming to school diligently ever since his memories returned, but he doesn't feel like attending afternoon classes today. He decides to head home for now and try to regain his composure by tomorrow. Unfortunately, peace of mind is something our poor man just can't seem to get. The moment he gets home, his phone starts to ring and he gets a call from Seiki, Rindo's mother. Although he hesitates at first, he picks up and they talk about Seiki having to leave on a work trip for two days. I know it's sudden, she apologizes, but could you stay at our place with Rindu during that time? When NC yells at her, warning against inviting a guy like himself over, Seiki confesses there's been something odd going around her lately. For example, when she was home alone the other day, she received multiple silent calls and has been getting love letters addressed to her. Without a name, no less. All this makes it plenty abundant there's someone following her, like a stalker or something. But whenever her mother talked to her about it, Rindu always seemed to brush it off and put on a brave face. Seki wants someone who can protect her to be by her side, and there's obviously nobody better than the kind-hearted brute that is our NC. You realize she's caught on to our relationship, right? NC asks, wondering how Seki feels about the possibility he might sleep with both mother and daughter. Aura, even if that happens, it's not my place to interfere. You're not the kind of person who would ignore her feelings and force her to do stuff against her will. So come over to our place, okay? The lady replies cheerfully, before hanging up. Later that night, MC shows up at Rindo's place, surprising her and really cheering her up. She didn't expect him to actually come, and you know she's excited for him to come, if you know what I mean. The girl is really excited to have a sleepover with her crush, and she asks him to come in, offering to go get the food ready right away. Although initially hesitant, a good meal later changes all of his thoughts and he's checking her out while they're sitting on the sofa. A mere glance from him makes her really start to blush. She gulps before setting up her trap. Rindo comments on how hot it is, before MC even gets a chance to deny it, but with them being indoors and stuff, she's taken off the rest of her clothes and showing off her assets. MC sees how flustered she is and tells her not to take it off if she's that embarrassed, his judging stares making her panic a bit. Trying to shift the mood a bit and execute the next phase of her plan, she suggests he take a shower first only for MC to realize he forgot his underwear, since he was in a rush to get to her place. Not wanting to go without for the night, he apologizes and tells her he's going to the convenience store for a bit. When she asks to come with him so she can get some dessert, MC takes note of how defenseless and inviting she looks and declines, telling her to stay home for her own safety. Lock the door quickly and don't open it, no matter who shows up, he warns, before shutting the door and leaving. His sudden departure makes Rindu's face heat up once again, as she believes he went to get some wrappers for his hot dog. Just then, she hears the doorbell and sees Sohei when she goes to answer the door. My mom gave me something to hand over to you, he mutters, staring deadpan at her through the peephole. He looks kinda suspicious, but Rindu doesn't really have a reason to doubt her childhood friend, apparently forgetting about all those creepy letters and calls she was getting. When she opens the door for him, he bursts inside like a wild animal and grabs her, sniffing her weirdly and doing some very suspicious things with his hands. He confesses he's been the one stalking her, and she realizes too late that she's in grave danger. So he promptly pushes her to the ground and declares he would purify her of having been tainted by MC. He covers her mouth and begins to administer his sinister desires upon her. Ryuichi, help me, she thinks, looking at her crazed childhood friend. The story flashes to a memory of Shizuna and Suhai when they were younger. In May he asked her to go out with him, and she happily accepted, not quite understanding what love was, and not even knowing what would change between them. When he would ask her to hold hands with him, she agreed, thinking he was like a younger brother she couldn't leave alone. Their relationship was wonderful, since they were like family together. But everything changed when Rindu Shizuna met Riwichi. Suhai has gone mad, thinking Shizuna was tainted by MC, and swearing to forgive her and purify her. As he looms over her menacingly, she thinks about how she just can't believe he would do that to her. After all, she's always considered him her little brother. 
So I starts touching her inappropriately, and she starts praying for MC to help her. Fortunately for her, who should arrive but MC himself. He comes home shocked to see Sohai there, then sees Rinda's terrified face. Without thinking, he promptly grabs Sohai by the back of his shirt and pulls him off of Rindo. When he sees the state she's in, something inside MC's head snaps, and he punches Sohai so hard, he goes flying into the wall. Why of all people are you the one scaring her? He yells into Sohai's face, causing him to nearly wet himself. But as she watches MC unleash his wrath, Rindu notices something different about MC and grabs him before he can do anything else. Sohai, ever the pathetic coward, seems to take this as her finally realizing her love for him and happily cries out her name. I knew you would understand me. MC steps back, confused as to what Rindu is about to do, only for both guys to watch as she goes up and promptly slaps Sohai hard across the face. I never imagined that my childhood friend would do something like this. What you did is despicable. Don't get involved with me anymore. And with that, looking at MC and Rindu towering over him, Suai scurries to the door, forces it open, and runs away crying like a wimp. With the incident resolving itself, Rindu staggers and collapses on the floor, letting out a little yelp. MC bends down beside her and covers her with his jacket, causing her to look endearingly at him. MC tells her to sit down and take a breath to calm down, leading her away from the door into a room. She plops down on the bed and starts telling him about Sohai, and how she still can't believe he would do something like that. MC agrees, thinking about what happened in the original NTR manga. He thought leaving them alone would mean Shizuna would be with Sohei, and everything would be peaceful. But the true nature of Sohai disgusts him. Rinda thanks MC for saving her, and admits she was glad he was there for her. When MC sees she's still trembling, he goes to place his hand on her shoulder but stops short. After all, she has seen the violent and scary side of her, what with punching Sohai in the face. Instead, he turns away and tells her he'll be in the next room. But Shizuna grabs him and tells him not to go. NC is confused, but she tells him she was really scared when Suhai touched her. But it's different with NC. It feels good when NC touches her, since she feels safe and warm. Rindo asks him to stay with her tonight. I was scared, and I want you to overwrite that experience. She blushes and looks him in the eye. Even if I'm just one of the many girls you've been with, I still want you. With that, she falls back on the bed and holds her arms out for him. Please touch me all over. Following this, Ryuchi asks if Shizuna is being serious, to which she replies with an affirmative. She reminds him how he was always there for her when she needed help the most, and protected her in her times of need. I like you, she tells him, admitting she would be alright with it even if she wasn't his only one. Until now, MC had been with women solely for the sake of doing it but he didn't expect it to be this hard to make a move when someone asked him to sleep with them. He places a knee on the edge of the bed and plants his hands down on either side of her head. Looming over her, he asks her if she's sure she won't regret it, and she tells him she won't. Having gained her consent, MC leans down and plants a deep kiss on her mouth, before intertwining his fingers with hers and looking deep into her eyes. It's time for him to get intertwined with her and look really deep into certain areas, if you know what I mean. As she looks up at him, blushing and her heart racing, MC takes off both of their shirts and reveals her twin melons. He seizes those bouncy jewels and starts squeezing them, causing Shizuna to make a bunch of cute noises as she twitches on the bed. MC asks her if she's feeling it a bit too much, and she gives these really embarrassed replies. But before she can go any further, MC slips his hand into her pocket, causing her to immediately tense up and cry out. MC does just that and asks her if she doesn't like it, but she instead grabs him and begs him not to stop, pleading with him to keep teasing her more about certain things. Fired up for real now, MC gets back into it, and the two devolve into a very heated embrace on the bed, making plenty of very indecent sounds until they collapse onto each other, intertwined in a loving embrace with Shizuna calling MC's name as she falls asleep. The next morning, Shizuna wakes up to MC sitting by her bed, telling her it's Saturday. Although they have some time, there's still stuff to do. MC checks on her and asks if she's doing fine, only for her to immediately flush red as she remembers the previous night's events. MC flinches at her reaction, being a bit tense himself, but she only slips under the sheets briefly before telling him she's doing okay. She greets him good morning too, before saying, she'll go make breakfast. MC stops her there, 
telling her to at least change her clothes first, since she's wearing literally just his jacket. She tells him to go on ahead for a moment, and MC leaves the room without hesitation. When everything is done and dusted, the two enjoy coffee together on the sofa. Shizuna talks about how a lot of things happened yesterday, and wonders how things would turn out in the future. But as she leans her head on his shoulder, she admits she feels so happy right now. MC looks away, at a loss for words, telling her that's good to hear. Unfortunately for him, her next words immediately cause him to nearly spit out his coffee. When I drink something, the inside of my stomach still feels all tingly. MC realizes why he'd been feeling something was off with Shizuna that morning. She's been giving off a really indecent vibe since earlier. Of course, MC still didn't go all the way with her. Right as he was about to do the deed with her, he rolled off of her, telling her a girl's first time isn't something for a guy like him to take on such a whim. MC told Shizuna to go to sleep, patting her on the head and bidding her good night. That's what happened the previous night, but Shizuna has been behaving as if the two actually did it. Ryuchi kun, you look rough, but you were so gentle last night. MC looks away, telling her not to make that face anywhere else, or someone will really end up misunderstanding. But Shizuna is really feeling it today. She turns to him, straight up asking him if they were going to continue from where they left off the last night. Seeing how enthusiastic she was about this, MC really had to struggle to hold himself back. He reminds her he's the guy who slept with many women, and even her own mother, all just for fun. MC doesn't think he's a good match for her and advises her to cherish her first time more. To this, Shizuna admits she doesn't really know him that well, but states she could tell from the look on his face that he was really enduring something. And there were even times when his eyes became really fierce. As MC begins to sink into despair, she tells him, if there ever comes a time when Ryuhi-kun wants to talk about it, she wants to listen. She promises to be by his side until that time comes. Shizuna is fine with how their relationship is right now and swears to give her first time to NC only. Seeing how she's acting, NC can only sigh at how pure and innocent she is. From the perspective of someone as clouded and dark as me, Shizuna appears so radiantly pure. NC says as he looks away, that's why I want you to stay just the way you are. But before anything else can happen, there's a loud clatter and clang before the door bursts open. And in comes Shizuna's mom. She asks them if they're doing okay, since she was incredibly worried and asked to return a bit early. When she sees the two of them casually chatting on the sofa, she giggles and teases them about not having to worry after all. I feel like I have interrupted something here. At this, both MC and Shizuna stammer their denials about the previous night's events, before Shizuna volunteers to go make more coffee for her mother. With her daughter gone, Shizuna's mother swoops in and kisses MC on the lips. Judging by the vibe between you two, she says as she licks her lips, you guys did at least this much, didn't you? Maybe we can all do it together someday, it'll be fun. Of course, before MC can fully process this proposal, she leaves to go put down her luggage, telling him it was just a joke, only for MC to facepalm, wondering what kind of mother and daughter are they. Monday at school, MC keeps noticing Shizuna looking at him, lost in a daze and only snapping out when MC looks back. Her reaction is too obvious though, and MC wonders whether it'll be easier for the two of them if he just asks her out. However, he can't return the same pure feelings she has for him, since he's unsure whether the violent desires and emotions of the old Ryuichi would resurface. But Shizuna seems to notice his ruminations, and looks worriedly in his direction. Elsewhere, however, at their school, a new antagonist shows his face. A group of girls circle around a guy called Shirasagi, asking him if he knows anything about what happened to Suhai. Shirasagi turns his gaze ominously in their direction, his eyes pitch black and menacing. Nope, I have no clue. After the previous day's events, the final of this part of the series approaches. MC finds himself in quite the sticky situation, since Shizuna has started approaching him more and more frequently when he's in class, asking to go home with him and offering to make dinner at his house again. Key word, again, actually no, scratch that, key sentence. The entire thing is wrong. MC can't believe she has the gall to basically ask him out in public and to talk about going to his house so casually. With how much he tried to drive her off previously, this really shouldn't have happened. You'd think with how much he tried to play hard to get that she would leave him alone. But I guess being a nice guy works? Anyone tried this in real life? Have you ever got a girl just by being nice, even though you didn't really like her? Share your stories in the comment section below. Anyways, as they head home for the day, 
MC tells her it's difficult for him to walk in the crowd if she sticks too close, since she's just happily clinging to his arm like an overattached golden retriever. MC asks her whether she's sure she doesn't mind, since there would be rumors at school if she's seen with him too much. But as usual, the Giga Chad girlfriend reassures him she doesn't mind at all, and she even blushes telling him, I think it'd make me even happier. MC is just as shocked as I am. I'll admit, I don't know what kind of rumors she's thinking about, but given she's blushing like that, I don't think she's thinking clearly. After all, Ryuichi is sort of like their school's bougie man. Just like my racist Uncle Ferdinand, one does not simply hang around them and escape with their reputation unscathed. Anyways, Shizuna tells him everyone was just misunderstanding him. When some girls who were concerned for her came over to talk, she told them about him, and they eventually began to think MC wasn't as scary as they thought. Gossip spreads fast, and all it takes is one positive experience. Now our MC finally gets the ego boost he so deeply craves, right? We can't help but root for him. When will he be recognized for being a good person? It makes you really wonder, doesn't it? If you've seen Overlord or The Eminence in Shadow, why are those main characters so loved despite dispensing war crimes like Skittles? Ions goes and annihilates an entire country, while Sid literally nukes a city. But both of them have countless admirers. Meanwhile, poor Ryuichi just keeps to himself and saves damsels, but everybody is scared of him. Doesn't seem so fair to me. We can't really blame him for feeling so isolated after all. You can see why Shizuna's reassurances don't seem to inspire MC, and he reiterates that he isn't a good person. But with a little food bribery by our girl Shizuna, he's persuaded to just go along with it, if for nothing else than just the promise of a nice, warm, home-cooked meal. Though with a blush like that, it's not hard to guess what's actually on his mind. Woot woot. What a lucky guy. I'd love to have a pair of nice big dumplings at my house. Oh, and to eat dumplings for dinner too. When they arrive at his place, Shizuna gets ready to make dinner while MC goes to answer the doorbell. Of course, Chisa shows up with some souvenirs, back from her nice little weekend trip. If you don't remember her, I don't blame you. But she's the girl who MC had done inappropriate stuff with in the past, and who kinda used his house as a pit stop when she got tired of partying. Normally, getting an extra cute girl would be great. But given he's with Shizuna, it's terrible timing for NC. She tells him she was planning to give him a souvenir and invite him out for a drink, but she never expected Ryuichi to bring such a cutie in. Apparently not the only one unable to read the mood, MC scolds her, telling her to at least give him a heads up when she's coming. If you just had dirty thoughts, I recommend checking out some of the other videos on our channel. We got plenty of sauce. Anyways, Shisa complains to him. Geez, what's the harm? We're friends, aren't we? Shizumina is barely paying attention to their conversation instead having registered this new woman as an existential threat to her plans. She's the one who was with Ryuichi before. Making up her mind in an instant, she grabs MC's arm and stares defiantly at Chisa. The two potential rivals introduce themselves to each other, with Chisa sparing her an amused smile. Shizuna tells her they're classmates and confesses she has a one-sided crush on him, but she plans to stay by his side forever. Her declaration renders MC speechless, but Chissa just jiggles and calls her cute, before approaching MC and sending him out on a fetch quest to some local stores. You were planning on having her cook a meal, and I want to eat a nice home-cooked meal too, so go buy the ingredients for my portion. She proceeds to toss him a wad of cash and motions for him to leave, but not without a few protests from MC. Aren't you being too selfish? I just got home for crying out loud. Unfortunately for him, Chisa is quite the stubborn girl, and she tells him she just wants to have a little girl-to-girl -girl chat with Shizuna. I'm even more worried now, MC remarks, before checking to see if our best girl here is okay with this turn of events. Shizuna clenches her fists and stares defiantly at Chisa, proclaiming her intentions to chat with her. It's cute how determined she looks. Seeing as there's nothing else he can do, MC leaves, but not before trying one last time to convince Chisa not to fill Shizuna's head with any strange ideas. Our poor defeated male here is forced to leave, which is kind of weird since it's technically still his house. So why is he the one being kicked out? Anyways, with our resident good guy out of the house, the two girls get to talking. Before the knave girl can get any ideas, Chisa reassures her she has no intention of becoming a romantic rival with her or wanting to keep MC all to herself. It turns out Chisa used to hook up with lots of guys, 
but eventually just fell for Ryuichi's techniques in the bedroom. So for her, the feeling isn't love so much as it is raw desire. On the other hand, Shizuna is genuinely in love with him and cares about more than just physical intimacy. But Shizuna recalls her first night sleeping with MC and about how she was the one who initiated things. She wonders if her love is truly pure and genuine since she can't suppress her feelings when she's with him. There are many definitions of love, you know? It's not a big deal. Regardless of what others may say, your feelings are the ones that matter. Those words from Chisa make Shizuna feel much better, and the two start to talk more about MC. Chisa tells her about how much MC changed, from how wild he used to be, to what he is now. Shizuna suggests it might have something to do with his past, but it turns out neither girl really knows anything about it. I've always felt that he carries some darkness in his heart, but you might be able to heal him someday, Shizuna. Those words really cause the girl to think, and she recalls how MC always accepts her selfish requests, but when it comes to his emotions in his past, he always turns her away. Hey there, it's serious me. Honestly, this is pretty standard guy stuff, not gonna lie. Most guys try to keep their pain to themselves, but here's some advice. You should try and talk to your girlfriend if you're struggling with something. Let her know what's on your mind. You might think you'd only make her worry, but trust me. If your girlfriend is worth anything, she'll likely be more than happy to hear you out. All right, dear viewers, that's enough for our serious chat. Back to the manga. While the girls are having their heart to heart, MC is out wandering the streets and complaining about Chisa. He turns into an alleyway and begins to think about his childhood. Did you guess an abusive family? Parents that abandoned him. A grandparent that distanced himself from his grandson instead of taking care of him? You must be Sherlock Holmes, huh? Ladies and gentlemen, I didn't think this needed saying, but please don't abuse your children. As it turns out, just like we all suspected, Ryuichi had a really terrible childhood. His mother would slap him around whenever he got in her way, since she really hated being tied to one relationship. One could call her a free ranch chicken. And his father just kinda wallowed in his own despair and paranoia, constantly fearing that his wife was cheating on him. Which she was, though who can really blame her? Some quick relationship advice for you lads, Feelings of inferiority in relationship are normal, but remember they're almost always just feelings. Show your partner as much love as they show you and be yourself. Sounds ideal, but it's better than living in constant self-doubt. Serious me out. Like we probably guessed, the couple's tension and frustration end up spilling out on NC. Unable and unwilling to just talk to each other, the MC's parents took out their anger on him. For example, when the young MC tried to talk to his father, he just got pushed away with plenty of angry remarks. You're my child with that woman. I don't want to think of you as my son. As the years passed, both of MC's parents passed away, and people didn't want to take the young boy in, fearing associating with that doomed couple. Even Ryuichi's grandpa didn't want anything to do with him, so he sent MC off to live alone with an occasional allowance. Not gonna lie, I imagine many of us would love to be in his shoes, away from our parents. He's got, like, no friends and family. An introvert's dream, just getting money from your grandparents without having to talk to anyone. Who knows, what would you guys do in his situation? Let us know down below. For Ryuichi, it's been a very long time since then, and these memories don't really even belong to him. Remember, the MC we know just got transported into the body of the manga character Ryuichi. But even then, the negative emotions of his past refused to disappear. Just then, MC arrives home and opens the door only to find Chisa playing with Shizuna's dumplings. Welcome back. We become good friends now. MC stands there, shocked, before sighing and going inside. My man's had enough. After dinner, Chisa proposes they go to a club right now, though MC tries to shut her down since they have school tomorrow. It's only 8 p.m., so his protests are useless and the girls drag him into their plans. With Chisa conjuring up images of a scantily clad Shizuna, and the girl herself more than eager to show off for her man, we soon enter a mini dress-up darling arc, provided by yours truly Chisa. MC has no choice but to admit her cuteness, though he complains she's showing a bit too much skin. It's risky. Only for Chisa to pat him on the shoulder, saying, it's fine. After all, he'll be with us. The girls are soon excitedly leading the way, and our man just gets dragged along for the ride. I wonder who will get to ride? I mean, what? He'll get to ride. But knowing MC and how protective he is of Shizuna, I'd imagine it's not the kind of ride Shizuna's hoping for. The trio go through the streets, 
with many bystanders gawking at the beauties by NC's side. And what do you know? The party runs right along into Suhai, who happened to be on his way to cram school to make up for skipping classes. The poor dude is a nervous wreck, which isn't surprising to be honest, and he asks MC what he's doing with those two girls. He's fallen on hard times, and is so caught up in his own misery that he can't even see them clearly. Bro can't even recognize Shizuna, what with her new hairstyle and outfit. Suhai stammers out some pathetic complaints, like you're just playing around, aren't you? You're just manipulating Shizuna into thinking you love her, when you're just a dirtbag flirting with girls at night. Problem. Unluckily for him, his former crush Shizuna is right there. Upon his lossy monologue, Shizuna unfastens her hair and reveals herself. The guy's jaw nearly drops to the floor, alongside the rest of his self-esteem, sinking faster than the Titanic. Shizu? Why are you dressed like that? Only for his former childhood lover to kiss MC on the lips, proclaiming her love for him. My heart already belongs to someone, so please give up and leave me alone. Seeing the rascal on the verge of collapse, MC decides to hammer in the final nail in Suhai's romantic coffin, deciding to play the role of NTR Ryuichi. He pulls the girls in close and makes a really creepy face. My bad, but that's how it is. If you don't want to get hit again, don't ever think about laying your hands on her. She's not the Shizuna you know anymore. Thus, we see the story go full circle. So Hai did end up losing Shizuna to Ryuichi, but in a surprise plot twist, it was actually due to Suhai being a big douchebag. And with that matter finally settled, the trio wanders off into the club while Suhai can only let out a cry of pure despair. One can only imagine him at the night's cram school, wallowing in his despair while doing math problems. Truly the purgatory of all dush bags. So with that, this part of the story ends. But wait, there's another chapter released. You're telling me there's more. We pan to the club MC is entering, where we see a girl getting harassed by an unseen guy, quietly freaking out and praying for someone to help her. Enter subjects A, B, and C, now approaching the scene. MC, Shizuna, and Chisa head to the club together, with Ryuichi surrounded by the two girls praising him about how cool he was. Of course, MC himself is feeling really tired and a bit disgusted, since he literally just pretended to NTR someone, which was the one thing he wanted not to do nine chapters ago. The group get their drink tickets for the two girls, and we see Shizuna nervously standing behind MC, while Chisa tries to reassure her. Underage people are also allowed here, so just relax and enjoy. Easier for her to say of course, since this is kind of like a second home to her. But MC just has this scowl on his face since he's wary of the clientele here. Though to be fair, the club crowd at 9pm isn't exactly what I would call suspicious. As they enter, the entire place is filled with bright flashing lights and loud music. We can only imagine crowds of clubbers in the background doing cheesy dances, hanging out and just having a great time in general which is hard for me to imagine. For one, the author literally didn't draw any crowds in the background, and even if they did, this sounds like introvert purgatory. I don't have any idea what it'd be like. Anyways, Chisa steers Shizuna away to get drinks and show her the ropes, before MC even has the chance to react. And here we were, thinking they came to the club to have fun together. They already ditched poor Ryuichi for some drinks. Imagine what it must feel like to be that one awkward dude, standing by the door of the party and watching everyone else have a blast. Totally couldn't be me, I swear. All the girls are having their drinks together at the bar, a pair of guys waltz up to them, whistling and catcalling. Whoa, you girls are really cute. You two here alone, come dance over there with us. Chisa casually and firmly rejects them, telling them they're already with someone. Could you go away please? But of course, these guys don't know when to F off and creep number one drools as he approaches Shizuna. Eh? Come on, what's the harm? You give off a pure vibe despite your appearance. You're totally my type. Only to be completely brushed off by her as she slaps his hand away. Stop it. There's only one man allowed to touch me. You tell him girl. Obviously, the guy doesn't take his rejection too well, and he gets really pissed off like he's going to start a fight. But before creep number one can do anything, a hand appears on his shoulder, and Ryuichi towers over him like the total badass he is. Do you have some business with my friend here? The man is an absolute menace, and the creep suddenly discovers his love of Jesus, remembering he had some community service to do. The guys are terrified, apparently MC's classmates who are more than aware of his reputation. If you're trying to pick up girls, go somewhere else. MC warns them, I'll beat you up if you try anything around me. 
Oh ho, let's take a look at Shizuna's face, shall we? As NC plops down next to the girls, she's like utterly in bliss. I just left you alone for a few minutes, and this happens, for God's sake. Ruchi complains while settling down. Chisa assures him she's used to this kind of thing, but praises him for being so cool when dealing with the guys. She doesn't seem that surprised though, since I'm guessing she's gotten used to Giga Chad NC. I'd imagine anyone would feel safe with that towering dude with them. Most of all, Shizuna. She's lost in thought, laying her head on his shoulder, having been reminded of when Ruchi first helped her nine chapters ago. Even back then, he saved me from someone harassing me. It felt like fate. MC isn't as dreamy about the situation as her, and he tells her it wasn't that big of a deal. Oi, oi, it was just a coincidence. But come to think of it, as MC looks down at the cute girl snuggling up to him, he remembers how she seemed so scared back then, but had gotten a lot more comfortable and carefree around him. With all his brain cells spent arriving at that conclusion, he wonders what brought about this change. Could it possibly be having a strong guy as her boyfriend, making her feel safe? It couldn't be. Anyways, with MC and Shizuna staring into each other's eyes, Chisa decides to leave the lovebirds to themselves, making an excuse to run off. See that expression MC has? He might as well wear it as his RBF. Since I swear I've seen it so many times, it'll end up haunting my dreams. Since Chisa knows what she's doing, MC stays with Shizuna. She suddenly grabs his hand. It's truly a lively place, isn't it? Even so, it's hard for a pure girl like her to get used to this. That's true, MC agrees as he looks at how nervous she is. I was kinda surprised. I didn't expect you to want to come to a club, of all places. It's then that Shizuna confesses she thought he liked this kind of thing. So she wanted to change how she looked and have MC see her in that Yaru persona. But it didn't really suit her, and she doesn't feel right in this kind of place. MC chuckles and reassures her. I'm actually relieved. There's no need for you to go out of your way to get used to this commotion. Then gathering up all the charisma built up inside of him, he turns to her and says the magic words every girl wants to hear. Besides, I definitely prefer the usual Shizuna. The Reese is super effective. Shizuna gets incredibly flustered and rests against him, only stammering out a single okay. With this, one of NC's worries has basically disappeared since he didn't want Shizuna to force herself into becoming a Jaru. The two lovebirds' little moment ends a moment later when the bat signal goes up. A commotion breaks out across the room. Chisa's voice cries out, Hey, you guys are being too pushy, you know? Can't you see that she doesn't like it? MC turns to the direction where the sound is coming from, seeing Chisa trying to help a nervous-looking girl escape the clutches of a pair of overly pushy guys. Ha! Mind your own business, lady, or maybe you want to have a drink together with me. One of the guys, which we'll call scoundrel number one, is trying to pull Chisa onto his lap, while his friend scoundrel number two has his arm wrapped around the nervous girl. You don't have a boyfriend, do you? What a waste. Even though you have such amazing melons, scoundrel two grabs her chest, and she cries out in fright, her arms shaking like crazy. Just then, I swear the most baddest moment in this entire manga pops up. Editor son, pull it up please. A voice calls out from behind. Oh I, MC appears behind scoundrel two, his face furious. Ryuchi empties his drink on the dude's head, then goes, You're just a filthy molester, behaving like that. When the scoundrel gets to his feet, looking for a fight or whatnot, MC just glares at him, and the guy lets out this pathetic eek, before plopping back down. You guys don't have the right to hit on girls. Come back after you've grown up. With that, the two scoundrels scurry off like the rats that they are, and Shizuna gives the girl a tissue, asking if she's okay. The girl shyly thanks them, introducing herself as Satsuki Shirasagi. She came here with a bunch of girls from her university, but they all got picked up by a bunch of guys, leaving her alone and lost. You must be scared, huh? Chisa notes, advising her to try and be more assertive or people will take advantage of her. Satsuki sighs, saying they're right and thanking them for their help. Though I can't imagine saying be brave to someone whose issue is being nervous is going to be helpful. Shizuna empathizes with the girl, since she is also not used to this kind of place and understands her nervousness. But if you raise your voice, there are people who will notice and help like Ryuichi. When Satsuki turns to him, MC voices his agreement. That's right. Quiet girls like you are the prime target for creeps. Plus, you look good. As if he forgot his own appearance, he warns her. You know, you don't clearly say no to things you dislike, you'll be devoured. 
MC's expression ends up scaring Satsuki, so she kinda cowers behind Shizuna like a frightened rabbit. Evidently, not all Satsukas are created equal in bravery. MC just looks at them, confused. I just smiled. Am I really that scary? Chisa steps in, placing her hand on the girl's shoulder. Of course, but he's just a high school student. Q is Satsuki, so shocked her background turns into polka dots. Shizuna just giggles at her expression, while MC sits there in exasperation. With the funny shenanigans out of the way, Chisa proposes a toast to the new group of friends, which they all take to with enthusiasm. After finishing her drink, Satsuki admits it's one of the best things she's ever had. While the others look on, glad to see she's calmed down and finally started to enjoy herself a bit. That's when she glances at MC. Ryuichi, despite your appearance, you're really kind. Despite your appearance. No. She did not just do our man dirty like that, right after he saved her. Well, a lot of guys come here with the intention of picking up girls, so it's probably better for someone like you not to come. I don't usually come here myself either. MC tells her as he enjoys his own drink. What comes next may not surprise you. In that case, can I have Ruchi's phone number? Satsuki asks, before quickly amending. And the others too. Unfortunately for her, she immediately draws the ire of Shizuna, who stares at MC, pouting as she awaits his response. Poor girl, she really sat down with MC and his two girls, thinking he wasn't prime real estate. Satsuki tells them she'd like to talk more with them sometime, and Shiza winks at her, quickly agreeing and suggesting they all exchange contacts. As MC looks at her info, he suddenly recalls seeing that name somewhere before, though he can't quite put his finger on it. With the night wrapping up soon, the group part ways with Chisa and Satsuki heading off in one direction, while MC walks Shizuna home. When the others are out of sight, MC turns his attention to the pot of discontent boiling beside him. Is there something you want to say? Of course, Shizuna just does a hemp before turning away. Does Ruchi prefer a girl like Satsuki? Then we get this gem of a panel. Satsuki has big melons after all. Here's MC, shocked that she thinks so lowly of him. And here's MC, wanting to fire back that Shizuna has big melons too, but managing to rub his last two brain cells together and recognize it would be the wrong dialogue option. Shizuna takes a moment to herself before turning back to him. Just kidding. I know that you can't ignore someone in trouble, as was the case with me too. You said that helping me was just a coincidence, but for me, it felt like fate. A fateful encounter that led me to deeply understand the person I came to love so much. Under a night filled with imaginary stars, MC also remembers how, if they hadn't met at that time, Shizuna might have taken a completely different route. His thoughts are interrupted as Shizuna places her hand on his shoulder. You're right, I felt jealous watching you talk to Satsuki. So give me a kiss before you leave. She looks longingly up at him, asking him to give her a proper, deep one. One so deep that it would satisfy the bad girl persona she's dressed as. She wants so desperately to be kissed deeply. To feel his love deep inside of her. I love you, Ryuichi. She begs him for more, breathing heavily and panting the entire time. Oh, you're getting too excited. It's nothing inappropriate. They do literally just that. The pair share a passionate kiss, with heavy undertones coming from Shizuna. Even someone as dense as MC can feel genuine love from her, and as he holds her in his arms, he realizes it's different from the women who seek him out just for pleasure. Realizing he might get too attached too quickly, and cross that line with her, MC pulls out, leaving her with a very suspicious cute expression that would have my grandpa chucking my computer out the window. MC manages to pretend as if nothing were wrong, and the two head home together with Shizuna clinging to his arm. Cut to MC's face, our man is blushing like crazy. Elsewhere in town, Satsuki has returned home. She thinks about the night's experiences, starting with getting dragged into going to the club by the sorority girls, being unable to keep up with their excitement, and then the Giga Chad Ryuichi. How despite his intimidating appearance, he was incredibly kind. She starts thinking more about him, his biceps, his collarbone, his broad chest. Ah, the raw Giga Chad Alpha energy. The pure manliness coming from him, and the kindness of a saint. She starts blushing furiously, having become completely infatuated with him in the space of just a few hours. Just then, as she's sitting on her bed daydreaming, her brother calls out to her, interrupting her thoughts. He enters with her clothes, telling her the bath is ready. Which is kinda weird, not gonna lie. I don't know about you, but brothers don't bring their sisters their laundry, right? Right? 
When paired with those evil looking black eyes, I'm already getting bad vibes from this guy. The dude positively emanates big villain energy, and it's a wonder Satsuki doesn't seem to realize. Her brother then asks her where she was, since she came home pretty late, showing an excessive desire to know about everything she did. Do you happen to have a boyfriend or something? Flustered, she quickly denies it and runs off to take a bath, leaving him standing there in her room. The shower is, as usual, filled with steam, which I'm guessing is that sentient anime steam that always floats around the melons. Why is everyone talking about Buskun when steam kun is a thing? After finishing her shower, as Satsuki gets dressed, she realizes she's lost her underwear somewhere recently and reprimands herself for misplacing things like that, making a note to buy more soon. Oh, are you hearing what I'm hearing? It appears we got Captain Underpants on duty, only this time he's a creep who steals girls' underwear. Meanwhile, MC finally realizes why her name sounded familiar. Satsuki Shirasagi was another heroine in the NTR manga, who was in the story following Shizuna's. Apparently, Suwai is involved too. Unfortunately for NC, he just skimmed the chapter, since he realized it was just another NTR story. That's when he comes to the realization that something is off. Could it be that girl is also being targeted by some dangerous creep? We then cut to Satsuki's brother, who is holding something. Zoom in. Are those panties? Oh no. If there's one thing worse than NTR, it's NTR concerning a girl and her own brother. It turns out, as he thinks about the situation some more, Ryuchi realizes he has read about the next arc in the NTR story. While on his way home from cram school, having had his entire worldview basically annihilated, Suhai runs into Satsuki, who recognizes him as one of her brother Akira's friends. Seeing how distraught he is, she asks him what's wrong, and she comforts him about having his heart broken over the situation with Ryuchi and Shizuna. I know what it's like to have your heart broken, she tells him as they take a walk in the rain together. Apparently, a similar thing happened to her before, so she easily empathizes with his situation. Unfortunately for her, her brother Akira happens to be out at that moment, and sees the two of them together. Being the creep that he is, when he and Satsuki are alone at home, he attacks her and ties her up, telling her it's her fault, since she's always so focused on Sohai, even though she's his. With her helpless like that, he confesses he's always wanted to do certain things with her, and ends up assaulting her while she tries in vain to resist, before giving up and not caring anymore, thinking nobody's coming to help someone like her, so it doesn't matter what happens anymore. Thus does the helpless Satsuki eventually submit to her brother's will, welcoming him home daily wearing nothing but a collar, and with her wrists bound in front of her. Quite an abrupt turn of events, if I do say so myself. I'm not sure what exactly Ryuichi's NTR story was originally about, but something tells me the original Ryuichi wasn't exactly the best kind of person. It's not exactly every day you end up with such hardcore NTR content in your hands, or maybe it's just me. Regardless, as NMC sits up in his bed, clutching his face and gasping in disbelief, the continuation of that manga floods back to him clear as day, even though he had no idea just a moment ago. As a presumably normal human being, he recalls being so disgusted by the development between Satsuki and her own brother that he ended up dropping the manga in his previous life. After his memories of the manga, he's certain her brother was Akira and recognizes him as one of his own classmates who often hangs out with Suai. While previously he was attempting to do everything in his power to not get involved, he now resolves to do whatever he can to prevent such a nauseating development. Looks like he's going to finally start taking a more proactive stance about this kind of stuff, and that determined look on his face really makes you think things will work out. The next morning at school, NC sits near the back of the classroom as usual, watching Akira from a distance. All the students are chattering as they settle in for their morning class, and a bunch of girls approach Akira, cheerfully greeting him. Our specimen appears to be just a normal popular dude, and it appears he has no problem with any social interactions. While MC looks on, he affirms as much, thinking he doesn't seem like such a sketchy guy from his appearance, but you can't judge a book by its cover. While he's distracted, his friend Makoto shows up, calling out to him and commenting on how he's been pretty early to school these days. When MC asks what he wants, Makoto just remarks how he hasn't been hanging out with them lately, before asking if he wants to join them for an upcoming party at the local club. Much to his surprise, Ryuchi immediately shoots him down, saying he'll pass. Makoto is shocked and notes how his vibe has totally changed, having once been a flashy playboy type. QMC's silly outraged expression as he protests, 
That's the worst way to phrase it. Makoto goes on to agree MC does look better this way and tells him to let him know if he ends up wanting to join. Based on his own knowledge of the manga, Ryuchi recalls his friend Makoto Fushimi as being a pretty good guy, despite hanging around him a bunch. At that moment, Shizuna pops into their conversation with a cheerful bright smile, greeting both guys a good morning. NC is surprised to see her, and he remarks don't just appear out of nowhere, you scared me. Which I personally find kind of goofy given he's probably at least a head taller than her. Shizuna is obviously quite annoyed by his reaction and protests him by saying what? You're treating me like I'm some ghost. It turns out she's come to them to bring MC the lunch she promised, which she plops on the table before quickly departing. Makoto gets this wacky smile on his face as he watches the couple. Oi, oi. Could it be a homemade lunch from your loving wife? You two have been really close lately, not wanting to launch into some prolonged explanation. MC just scowls and tells him various things happened, but not to worry about it. At that moment, their teacher pops in, instructing everybody to take their seats and settle in for the period. The teacher closes his eyes and gives an announcement before class begins. I know this is sudden, but Shinazaki Suhai has transferred to another school due to family circumstances. This news is a surprise to everyone in class, including MC himself, who looks utterly bewildered. His classmates burst into the typical noisy chattering, noting Suhai's recent absences, but finding it really sudden regardless. Ryuchi thinks about this information before turning and glancing at Shizuna, who seems kinda conflicted about the situation for obvious reasons. Suhai was undoubtedly a creep, but he was still her childhood friend and seemed to be a decent person outside of his unhealthy obsession with Shizuna. NC likewise feels bad for Suhai, but concludes it's probably for the best given what the creep tried to do to Shizuna. However, a more pressing issue is on his mind, which is that of Satsuki and her brother. Now that Suhei, the main character of the manga, has left, he doesn't know what will happen next. After all, things were supposed to center around Suhei and Satsuki, following the creep's failed romance with Shizuna. On one hand, now that Suhei is gone, there might be a chance the Satsuki NTR route could be avoided. After all, when the two had met at the club the previous night, it didn't seem like Akira had done anything to her. But since he's now off the plotline of the NTR manga, things have become a lot more complicated. MC decides to contact Satsuki later and see how she's doing. The school day passes as usual, and soon it's time for lunch. As expected, the contents of that bento box are amazing. And when Makoto casually comments on it, MC devolves into a caveman shouting, I'm not sharing any with you, chill out dude. It's not like your friend is taking any from you. Lunch antics aside, Ryuchi seems to really enjoy Shizuna's meal, going all soft-faced while chowing down on his food. Across the classroom, Shizuna is watching him, giggling as she thinks about how cute MC looks when he's eating. Her glances are noticed by her friends, who point out how she's looking at Ryuichi again. Shizuna initially tries to deny it, but when her friends start talking about how MC isn't as bad as he seems to be, or how they like wild hunks like him, Shizuna gets all excited and worked up, being a bit too quick to agree with them. When her friends only grin at her, their suspicions confirmed, she finally realizes she's been played. The girls promptly burst into laughter. Ah, the folly of youth. On the other side of the classroom, a girl is chattering to Vakira while he stares down, barely paying attention and apparently lost in thought. Lunch soon passes by and MC decides to take a short nap before the rest of the break passes. But before he can do anything, Akira approaches and asks to talk to him for a bit, catching him off guard. You're Akira Shirasagi? Akira is surprised to be recognized, and there's this kind of tense standoff between the two, with MC looking up at him suspiciously, wondering why he's approaching him. I can't beat the NTR out of you without getting closer, is what I'd wish he said, but it appears Ryuchi prefers a more civilized approach, agreeing to meet with Akira outside. The two go out into the courtyard, where Akira apologizes for the surprising request. The entire time, MC is just trying to figure out what Satsuki's brother wants with him, since the two have hardly ever had any conversations. Is it just a coincidence, or is there something else to it? Akira begins to explain, telling him his sister told him about him after MC helped her when she was being harassed by delinquents. Satsuki originally wanted to keep it a secret, but Akira put things together somehow, and he asks if all this is true. MC kinda looks at him, silently challenging him to see what his point was. 
only for Akira to actually bow and thank him for saving his sister. Cue the shocked expression. Life is full of surprises after all, and it turns out Akira might be a better guy than he was set up to be. He goes on to explain his sister has always had trouble saying no to anyone, which has greatly worried him. He can't help but wonder what would have happened if NC wasn't there. As a result, he wanted to express his gratitude to NC. With events unfolding completely differently from the NTR manga, Ruichi is a bit taken back by Akira's words, and he only gives a hesitant you're welcome as he looks at Satsuki's brother, thinking he might be a decent person after all. Akira goes on to say what everyone else has, which is that although he thought MC was a total delinquent, it turns out he's actually really kind. No wonder you're popular with the girls. Again, cue an annoyed Ryuchi face at being called a delinquent. Poor fella. Imagine everyone you meet saying something like, I thought you looked like a criminal, and I'll imagine your patience starts to get worn thin. Anyways, with this encounter sorted and out of the way, Akira thanks MC once again for his time, before waving and wandering off. Back in the classroom a while later, MC keeps looking over at Akira, but his opinions seem to have changed in the last few minutes. From what he can tell now, he definitely seems like a decent guy. He can't help but hope that with Suhai transferring to a different school, Akira's Yandere route can finally be avoided. In the end, however, it's practically impossible for him to know what will happen in the future, so he resolves to subtly warn Satsuki about this possibility, just in case. On the way home from school that day, MC meets up with Shizuna and thanks her for that amazing bento, causing her to blush and smile, telling him he's welcome. I made it just because I wanted to, so no need to thank me. I'm glad you liked it. If you'd like, I'll make more in the future. MC is naturally really grateful, and he takes her up on that offer right away. They walk a little further away from school, and Shizuna suddenly grabs him by the arm, all lovey-dovey and positively sparkling with affection. A bit embarrassed, MC complains they're still near the school and tries to untangle himself from her, but accidentally rubs her melons with his elbow. Immediately, Shizuna makes a cute noise and blushes even more. Now she's super embarrassed too, or is that some other expression? MC is once again really shocked, and he quickly apologizes, taking note of Shizuna's cute voice. The two quickly get over their awkward situation, and Shizuna asks him what he's doing for dinner tonight, and whether he's fine if she comes over to make dinner. MC quickly turns her down, hesitant to ask for more from her today, and he reveals he occasionally does his own cooking. Shizuna goes from being a bit down at being rejected, to two separate stages of shock at realizing Ryuichi cooks. What's with the reaction? He exclaims, and one can only imagine how annoyed he must be, being stereotyped as a delinquent and all. I'm sorry, but you look like you might not even know how to cook rice. Shizuna says, looking at him like he's just told her he actually had the highest grades in his class. Do you really think of me like that? I'm not confident about taste, but I'm not that useless, he protests. As the two part ways for the night, Shizuna grabs him by the shirt and asks him for a goodbye kiss. Something starts beating rapidly, and it's not Ryuichi's meat. With his heart pounding in his chest and Shizuna longing for him to do that to her, the pair share a deep kiss before they separate, each heading home alone. When he gets back to his little house, Hensi does a bit of reflecting on his own feelings, which is something all of us should do more. He recognizes his feelings are complicated right now, since he's definitely starting to fall for Shizuna, but he's also guilty about the path it took for them to get here. Ryuchi resolves once more to ensure the relationship doesn't become any more complicated than it already is before digging into his wondrous dinner, the most delicious dish among Ryuchi's homemade dishes. Tada, rice with an egg. This one is definitely the easiest to make, but something tells me it's not as good as Shizuna's bento. As he digs into his Michelin tier dinner, the doorbell rings and MC wonders who would be at his place this late at night. And what do you know? Chisa pops in, reeking of booze and completely wasted, leaping into his arms and knocking him to the ground. But she hasn't come alone. Someone else is with her. With a nervous apology for showing up unannounced, it appears Satsuki has arrived. No matter how much he may try to stay out of the NTR route, trouble just has its way of finding him. First with Shizuna, and now with Satsuki falling for him after that club situation, Ryuichi will once again be pulled into someone else's business. And if he wants to be the true anti-NTR protagonist, he better start working, stat.